Hello. <laughs> so glad you got my name correctly. Um, so uh, here is, let's start. So um, a few words about myself so that you can put this talk into some, so that you can put this talk into some perspective. <laughs> so uh, I've been working as a Linux embedded engineer for the last seven years. Um, most of the time doing drones, just like this one, and other IoT devices. And I've, to do that, I've been using tools such as Billroot, Yocto, and Alchemy, which is an Android-based build system. But yeah, most of the time using Yocto, which is the most popular one, I think. And yeah, one thing, one, another thing about me is that I place a high value on the tools I use every day. And so yeah, for a few, few years, I've been switching distribution, switching desktop environments, switching everything. Um, yeah, kept using one software, which is GNUMX for the last decade, but yeah, um, <laughs> never found in, um, in Billroot, in Yocto, in Android, uh, a reliable tool that I want to carry on using. And so yeah, this is why I'm here. So in the meantime, I discovered GNU Geeks a um, few years ago, I've been quite involved with GNU Geeks. Uh, I don't know how many of you have ever heard about GNU Geeks. Yeah, great. Maybe you saw <coughs> the video talk yesterday. Um, so GNU Geeks is many things. It started as a very innovative, very innovative package manager based, based on Nix. But now it's much more than that. It's a tool to instantiate an operating system, which is called GNU Geek System. It's a container provisioning tool, it's a CI tool, it's, yeah, it's a lot of things. And, yeah, back to Yocto. Um, what do we expect from Yocto and, and such tools? We expect, obviously, a tool that you can use to generate some disk image so that you can put them on an embedded device and boot from this disk image. You also expect that this tool has a, a wide support of packages and recipes and board support so that you don't have to write everything uh, from scratch. Uh, and you also expect a tool that uh, will allow you to deal with your 10 different hardwares in 50 hardware revisions in uh, 10 different products. Um, yeah, in a few words, help you cope with uh, industrial mess, which is a real thing. And uh, yeah, so Yocto does everything, the other tools also. But I've been wondering, uh, could GNU Geeks do the same thing? And if you want to stop listening, the answer is yes, but I'll expose you why. So um, let's take um, a real world example. Let's say I have this board, which is a Pinex 64, and I want to make it fly. So. <laughs> Obviously, this, this, there is some work. <laughs> well, <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, one solution could be to install ArduPilot, which is a real nice software. Uh, it's an autopilot. Uh, you can use it to build some drones, some helicopters, some planes, some submarines, some crazy stuff. And um, yeah, let's say I want to install ArduPilot on this board. So uh, we'll see how it's done with Yocto, and then we'll see how it's could be done with Geeks. <coughs> so how would we do that with Yocto? Let's say I'm using Ubuntu. So first, I need to install some packages. Uh, then I need to clone Yocto sources. Uh, so I use Pocky, which is a Yocto distribution. Then I need to find some support for this board, which is not included in this repository. So I will have to find an extra layer, uh, which I, I find there from some Mr. Alistair 23 I don't know about. Uh, <laughs> I, I'll clone the, um, the layer, then I will source the environment, then I need to tell Yocto, hey, there is a new layer, you need to take, t take it into account, so I write this command, and then I need to add ArduPilot, the package ArduPilot to my image. Um, it doesn't exist in Yocto, so if you type this command, it won't work. It won't work at this step. Uh, but let's say it, it does. And so, yeah, you add ArduPilot, and then you can produce your disk image. So you type this command. You'll wait. And wait. <laughs> no, no, no. Before waiting, you'll get this warning. It says, ah, oh, your host distribution, Ubuntu, has not been validated. You may experience unexpected failures. 
uh, you should use a tested distribution. So uh, I didn't know Ubuntu was such an exotic distribution. I mean, <laughs> if I've been using yeah, crazy stuff like Gen2 or Geek System, I, I would have understand, but understood that. Yeah, Ubuntu, come on. Uh, so yeah, I see this. I don't want to go any further because it means that, yeah, it may fail. It may fail because of my distribution. I won't know why. I'll have to bisect it. So the solution here will be to use a virtual machine or a Docker file, but I really don't want to do that. Um, so let's keep going. Um, <laughs> so now you wait. <laughs> then you go to sleep. Then you come back. Then you don't have any space on your hard drive anymore. <laughs> but it works. You get a disk image, and yeah, it does the job. Like it's not that hard, and you can boot from it. And yeah, so it's a way of doing things. Another way would be to use GNUgix. So GNUgix is based on a Guile language, uh, GNUgile, which is scheme language, and um, so obviously everything is written in Guile. So you you have to write Guile, and so you write something like that, which is a, an operating system configuration, which tells uh, to Gix um, uh, what will be the disk image you want. And so you'll have to describe a few things. So you'll have to tell the host name of your system. You have to tell the bootloader you use, which is a, spe a specific bootloader for this board. Uh, some fields are implicit. Like, for instance, it doesn't say I want to use Linux, but it's, a, it's an implicit field I could use another thing in the future, like herd or stuff. Um, I have to specify some modules, the file system I want to use, the packages, which are the base Geeks packages plus uh, RD pilot, which is packaged in Geeks, uh, which I did package in Geeks, um, <laughs> for this talk. Um, <laughs> and some services, so I'll take the base services and add a console, a console service. And uh, GNU Geeks is a functional distribution, which means that you apply functions to functions, who checks functions as arguments. So to go from this operating system declaration to your disk image, obviously you need to apply a function. And that function will be, hey Geeks, uh, please take my operating system and make a disk image from it. And that's pretty much it. I mean, you can start any REPL, type this function with this file as argument, and you'll get a disk image. Um, you can also use um, a, a command to do that, which is quite quite obvious. You, you, you say, Geeks, I want a system, uh, a disk image system, uh, from the configuration file I show you, and I want it for this board architecture. Then you wait. Um, <laughs> you may wait. <laughs> you may wait a few minutes if everything goes... But, yeah, I'll get there. Um, and then... Uh, when you have the disk image, you can flash it on uh, an SD card. You plug the SD card on the board, and it works too. Um, so some of this stuff is mainline. Some will come real soon. If you try this on the current release, it won't work, but it may work in the future release. Um, and now the question is, I oh know. So yeah. You get something like that, so you have um, a, a Geeks operating system, you can see that Arducopter is running, and in short, you have to write one file, uh, run, what, write, run write command, uh, wait a few minutes, and then you get uh, a system which does exactly what you want. And the question is, does it fly? So, <laughs> so yeah, I can throw it out of the window, <laughs> but it may not be an Arducopter supported flight mode, so... Yeah, might find some motors and stuff first, but uh, the hardest part is done for us. Uh, so now you know how it's done with Geeks and Yocto. Let's talk about the two tools. So uh, they have a different organization. Yocto has many layers uh, maintained by different entities. So for instance, you can see that um, there are some open embedded layers, which are some kind of official layers with good support. And there are some layers which are unofficial quite unofficial, like the one I used for the board, and yeah, the quality can vary a lot. And Geeks has a different approach. Uh, we have only one Git repository with every package, every board supported. Um, 
you, while you can add some ex, some extra repositories with extra recipes, um, it's not the re recommended way of doing things. I mean, uh, adding some patches is just one patch to one Git repository. Everyone can do that. It's very simple. And so the, we have different organizations. Um, yeah. One thing I want to talk about is build reproducibility, uh, also called uh, deterministic compilation. So, yeah, both GNUX and Yocto aim for reproducible builds if you read their documentation. But if you read the Yocto wiki, you will, it says, depending on circumstances, it might help to build on the same distro with the same packages installed in the same pass and using the same build hardware. So, can be quite tricky. <laughs> and, <laughs> And what it means is that uh, my colleague Alice can build my disk image on her, her computer with uh, her distribution, and I can take the exact same sources, and it will fail on mine. And I won't know why. Fine, yeah, I, I can know why, but um, it's, uh, yeah. With NuGix, uh, things are a bit different. Uh, Geeks is building in isolated environments, and... Um, you can expect you can expect that you get the same result, uh, even if you are running completely different host distributions uh, on different hardware and with using different build paths. Um, the only thing that matters is that you run the same version of GNU Geeks. If you run the same version of GNU Geeks, you have the gra the guarantee that uh, you have a, a stronger guarantee at least. Um, you don't need to use a Docker image or a virtual machine. Um, yeah, I think it's it's a good point. Uh, another thing is that um, to build packages in Geeks, as I told you, it's functional. So you have to write a function that knows how, how to build the package. So it's a function that says, OK, run, make, and conf configure, and make, and make install. And you have to give this function some inputs, which are the package dependencies. And you get one output, uh, most of the time a binary. And um, Gix has an official CI build farm which does all this stuff ahead of you and bef when you start building your disk image it will say it will ask the server hey have you ever done this computation with this, this gig version and those inputs and if it says yes then you just download the, the output file and it will be much faster uh, if this package is Linux with all modules enabled yeah, you'll be really glad that, that it did. Um, uh, you can also, with GNU Geeks, um, use offloading. So you can set up several machines on several architecture, and you can offload, you can offload quite uh, transparently the build to those machines, which is very nice too. Um, Yocto has kind of the same mechanism about yes, what, what we call substitutes in Geeks. It's called share at state. And uh, it's kind of what I described, but it means that if your build machine is running a slightly different distribution or if it is ahead of you, he, 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 there were some apt-get update which uh, modified the versions, uh, chances of hitting substitutes and getting substitutes from the build machine are reduced and are very reduced. And that's something that, yeah, we don't have in Geeks. And one other, other cool thing is that, uh, remember the configuration file I wrote? I can do many things with it. I can build a disk image for my architect, my host architecture. I can build a disk image for uh, a foreign uh, board architecture, which is what I did earlier. I can also reconfigure my system if I'm already running a gig system using the same configuration. I can also spawn a disk image. I can make a Docker container out of it. Or I can deploy it to remote machines by SSH. And all of this with almost the same configuration that SCM, you can do all this stuff. Um, another cool thing is that Yocto is written in like Bash and Bitbake language and Python and it makes lots of languages. And Geeks is written in only one language, and it means that you can use it to um, to build upon your 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 disk image. And for instance, let's say I build a copter uh, earlier, and I want to change my mind and build a plane instead. So um, I can write a function that 
take a vehicle in argument and returns an operating system which inherits from the one I showed you earlier and uh, whose packages will be um, uh, depending on this function who again takes the vehicle and if the vehicle is a copter it will use the Arducopter uh, package which is a variant of Arducopilot and if uh, it's a plane you can use the Arduplane package and then all you have to write is make vehicle copter or make vehicle plane and you get either a plane or a copter and having this flexibility uh, is really nice, I think, as a, as a system integrator. And you can build a lot of tools upon your, your gig system. And I'll give you other examples. Let's say um, I want to know all the licenses I have, uh, all the licenses of my packages which are involved in my disk image. So I can start a gig CRPL or run a script which says, um, Okay, for all the packages in my operating system, get the license and get the license name and print it. And then you get all the licenses involved in your disk image, just uh, calling uh, like three functions. Um, if I want to know all the packages which are licensed with GPLv3, uh, it's uh, quite easy to. I call the same function to get the packages, then I get the licenses, and then I can filter them uh, depending on the license, and then again I have the list of packages which are licensed with GPLv3. Um, but Geeks can be seen as a, a, scheme li a scheme library, so I can do pretty much what I want. Um, yeah. And now let's say um, I don't have a strong knowledge in uh, line, GNU Linux and stuff. Uh, it happens sometimes. I mean, you have a team in industry. You have a team of people who are, their job is to do system integration. And then you have engineers, which are a signal engineer, which runs, spend all their time in MATLAB. And sometimes they want to tweak a package, like add the configure flag, or um, change some things on the disk image. And if, if it's two of them, it's okay, but if it's 100 of them, you want them to be quite independent and do the stuff by themselves so that they don't have to go and bother you and you don't have to explain them what is uh, Ubuntu and uh, Git and Bitbake and Pocky and, yeah, and Repo and, yeah, and it can be, it can be very fast for them. So with, with Git, the nice thing is that everything uh, start from the configuration file. So if, for instance, they want to take your image and add an SSH server, they can inherit, <coughs> as I did earlier, from uh, your system. They can add one services, which is OpenSSH, and they can tweak some uh, parameters, which are, yeah, allow root login, uh, add one uh, authorized key, which is my key, and run on a different port. And it means that they don't have to add an extra layer, make it inherit from SSHD, then uh, add an SSHD configuration file, modify it. Uh, all of they just have to read the documentation, find the suitable service, um, use the, the correct configuration, and they can refresh an image. Um, this is true for OpenSSH, but this is true for most services. Uh, you can write your own services, obviously. Um, I think it can be quite handy. Uh, now some limits. I mean, <laughs> yeah, it's the last, it's the last slide. Um, well, Yocto and Beloot and, Alchem and Android have been there for a few years. Uh, well, I mean, a lot of years. Uh, they work, like, they work pretty well, they have a, a wide, wide board of uh, support of boards and packages, and, and those, yeah, those are nice tools. Um, Geeks comes mostly from, I mean, at start, people use it as a desktop distribution, so um, it's recent that we started hacking on embedded devices, and this means that uh, while you will have uh, many packages that 
uh, build natively. I mean, you can build Git on your computer, you can build uh, every other packages. If you try to cross-compile them, well, it may fail because no one has tried before you. And the main use case of Yocto and build root is to cross-compile packages. So obviously, yeah, more, more packages are cross-compiling. And another limit is that the, the image is the image I produced earlier, the disk image, is not that minimal. With Yocto, it was 300 megabytes, and with GNU Geeks, it's 1.5 gigabytes. Um, there are, I mean, there are no good reasons for it to be 1.5 gigabytes. Yeah, it, could, it could really be like 300 too, but we have to spend some time, and as I said, it's not been a lot of time you know, working on this stuff, so we have some progress to do. Uh, also, we don't have support for the minimalistic libc, like uh, yeah, muscle libc, everything. Uh, we just use the plain glibc, mostly. And we have support for like 10, 15 boards, which is nothing compared to Yocto and, and, and Friend. Uh, but anyway, I think that um, GNU Geeks is already, or almost already, an alternative to, to Yocto. I mean, you can do what I want. You can, yeah, in the future Geeks release, you can uh, download Geeks, get your board, write your configuration file, and flash it. And, and it, may be, it may be really, really fast. I mean, if the CI server has been doing this stuff ahead of you, uh, building the disk image is like 5, 10 minutes, and it won't take 15 gigab 50 gigabytes, uh, it can be very fast. And it can be really easy too. You don't have to inspect layers. You just have to write one configuration file. And the scheme API can really be nice. Uh, I mean, both for system engineers and both for, um, for developers. And um, most important point, Nugix is like really fun. And you should come help us. So thank you for your attention. Yeah, I guess we have time for some questions. Okay. Um, <coughs> so uh, you mentioned binary reproducibility. Mm -hmm. um, it, what, what guarantees do you give? Is it just, you know, it will be roughly the same, or is it really binary? So I can build the image, I can build it tomorrow, and it will have the same well, chart checksum. Yeah, I try to use the right vocabulary, which okay. is quite complicated. But yeah, what I mean is that um, we, we offer the, ground, the gar strong guarantees, like building in isolated environment, in containers, um, which with, uh, with well-known inputs. Mm -hmm. So you have good, good chances that you'll get the same result uh, from one disk image to another disk image on different distributions and stuff. But if one package is, one package is including a timestamp in your binary, then you get a different result. Yeah. And it's true with the Octo, it's true with Geeks. Uh, it's just that you have stronger, guarant stronger chances mm -hmm. to get reproducibility with but Geeks. But, but you already handle things like the file system and, and the file system itself and, uh, I don't know, these partition labels and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I mean, the point of the, ah, uh, yeah. Uh, so, so the question is, uh, with Yocto, you can build some SDK. Uh, do we have the same feature with Geeks? Um, with Yocto, it, it is often very useful to have this SDK because you can ship it to teams so that they don't have to download everything and they have a nice environment to hack. Uh, that's something I didn't show with Geeks, uh, but you have also some really powerful tools to hack in a given environment to build your packages, your native packages. Um, and I mean, it's not some really, really dedicated tools like the SDK. It's more, it's more how Geeks does stuff, but I didn't have enough commands like Geeks environment, Geeks uh, that can do pretty much the same thing uh, without being a specific thing like the SDK. Okay, so it's time's up. Thank you, everyone.